Hi everybody! Today I'm sharing a different type of video, my first ever painting tutorial at the request of a friend who saw my Canada Goose watercolor painting that I made for my Etsy site and requested that I make a video showing how I actually uh, go through the process to paint this if you want to follow along. In the description below I've included a list of all of the equipment, paint colors, and things like that that I use in the video. I also included a PDF that you can download if you want to use the same image I drew for my Canada Goose. I'm using Arches Cold Press 140 pound watercolor paper and I like to begin by taping off the edges to ensure a crisp edge even if I know that the background is going to be white. And next I move to transferring my finalized traced image onto the watercolor paper. So I begin by wetting my palette and placing a drop on each pan to activate the watercolor and test out my first color that I'm going to use which is buff. I'm going to start off with the belly area of the Canada Goose and I want to do a wet in wet technique which means I wet the area I want first with water, plain water, before dropping in some of the buff paint color that I have chosen. So while I let the belly area dry I'm going to move on to the neck of the goose and instead of using black I like to make a very dark color by mixing up French ultramarine blue with burnt sienna first in a um, lighter tone and building up the layer as I go. So here I'm just testing out to see what the color actually looks like and then I move on to another wet and wet technique. I wet the neck area first, wait for a moment so that the water is absorbed by the paper and when I no longer see a sheen I drop in my dark gray paint. I'm going to do the same thing with the face area of the goose so that I maintain a soft coloring there. I want it to look like there's some light reflecting. While I leave the neck area dry I'm going to move to the legs, uh, feet, and I'm going to use the exact same color and same technique. Drop in my water first and then drop in my paint color. Knowing that I want uh, some dark areas on the webbed feet, as I look at my reference I just drop in a bit more uh, color where I know that I'm going to be wanting the, the shadows to show. And I repeat the same thing with the other foot, making sure that I add um, a bit of a stronger hue of the gray where I want it to look darker. In my drawing I noticed that I had forgotten to pencil in the uh, shadow that's cast by the goose so I just did that quickly before moving on to the beak color. So I'm just testing out a slightly different shade of gray. I want it a bit lighter and so I just added water and I'm working a bit more carefully here because I want to get the bit of reflection on the beak as well. So next thing I'm going to work on is the top uh, feathers of the bird and I'm mixing a bunch of different colors to test out some burnt umber, some raw sienna and some sepia and then making some markings to see how the colors mix together before going on to use them on my actual painting. So I'm going to build up the color here as well, the top folded wings where they meet the belly area. So I'm careful as I place just plain water uh, for my next wet and wet and then I take a bit of my brownish color and start laying it in. I want to be sure I leave the white area at the top where the, the sunlight is reflecting on the wing and I use my paper towel to correct the areas where I've put on a bit too much paint. And while the paint is still wet I go back in with a darker color where I want to show the depth 
of the folded wings. And some of the um, feather markings near the tail area. This area, because it's further away from the viewer, we want to make sure it looks a little bit darker so we get the sense of depth. I then go in to paint the top of the goose's feet where the whitish sort of feathers still exist. But if I could go back, I would not separate that area as I do. That's a rookie mistake. <laughs> I recommend you actually paint the underbelly area along with the top of the legs at the same time. That will make it look far more natural than what I did here. Next, I want to create that form shadow underneath the chin. And so I take my palest hue and drop that in and I soften the edges by dipping my brush into water and using the damp brush that way. All right, it's time to tackle that cast shadow at the bottom. And because I wanna be sure that it's a soft shadow, I wet the area and I'm gonna do another wet and wet technique where I make sure that the paint I drop in stays within that wet area and I build up the gray shades from there. Uh, we don't want any hard edges here. Um, so I use my damp brush at times around the sides to make sure that um, the edges sort of blur in uh, smoothly. So it's now safe to go back to the underbelly area and put in some of those uh, shadows that really will make the bird look three-dimensional. So same technique, only I'm using a different shade of brown here and being careful to notice where the darkest darks are going to be and trying to blend in the edges so again we don't have any um, hard edges. I just keep looking back and forth at my reference image and trying to follow the uh, hues and tones uh, that I see there. It's time to tackle that neck area again and build up the dark black color. So I'm creating a stronger um, version of my prior hue and keep testing it. So again, ultramarine blue, French ultramarine marine blue and burnt sienna uh, using less water so that the color comes across a bit darker. Even though it looks like the whole area of the goose's neck is black, there still is a bit of a sheen where the light hits it. So I leave that bit of the section a bit paler and I carry on the same technique up in through the uh, face area. As I continue to approach the beak area, I feel like I didn't do as good of a job as I did with the reference image. I ended up making it too dark in some places and not um, creating a reflection that's uh, very realistic. And this is why I end up uh, painting hundreds of geese before I actually get a good one. So here I'm introducing a new color called Neutral Tint. It's sort of a palish black and it's what I'm going to use to build up the uh, sort of darker areas of the feet and the neck. So you'll notice that I keep darkening the leftmost side of the goose's neck and the reason for this is the way that the light is uh, hitting the goose. The sunlight is from the right and we want to sort of exaggerate that a bit by making sure that the side of the goose that's not in the light definitely looks darker. That will give the viewer's eye a sense of shape and depth. So moving on to the top part of the goose's uh, body area, I'm wetting it and gonna do wet and wet. What I'm gonna pay most close attention to is the direction of the feathers here so that I get the right body shape. And I definitely don't wanna go too dark in the colors because it's the upper area where we know that sunlight is hitting it, but there's a bit of a curvature that's moving in towards the folded uh, upper wings. We wanna capture that slight shadow. So in this upper area here, I put a little too dark of a color. So I'm gonna blot off some with my paper towel. 
Time for a coffee break and let the paint dry. And when I come back, I'm gonna use my Pigma Micron 01 uh, waterproof pen to put in some details that are too fine to put with a uh, paintbrush, for me at least. Because the web feet of this painting uh, really make the goose pop, I pay extra attention here and move slowly as I lay in the interplay of light and shadow with my dark pen. I also tackle the eye here as well with the pen and use my kneadable uh, eraser to remove a few of the pencil markings that are still left behind. So it's finally time to begin on some details and using a dry brush technique where my brush is doesn't have a lot of water on it I start feathering in some of the uh, linear shapes a slightly darker brown as I keep layering on the different feather markings that I notice stand out and so I continue working like this all over uh, all areas of the bird uh, top side and bottom so at this point, all areas of the bird have been painted. I have some a coating of color. And for the rest of the painting, I'm going to be layering on uh, deeper and deeper shades as I see fit. And I'm going to move from the face to the neck to all, all the different areas according to uh, how dry each area is. So there's an area in the underbelly that really needs to be much darker than the rest. And so I use a gray here to uh, mark that out and again uh, give more shape to the bird. So I'll be honest, this is the point where I start to potentially ruin my paintings. So I'm good uh, with the initial washes of color and then when it comes to uh, adding detail or uh, darkening areas, I can often do too much and go beyond a certain point and totally kill the painting. But that's how you learn. And I just keep at it, figuring I'll just get better with time. So if you do try this painting, you'll have to let me know. And also let me know where I could have done a little more explaining to help you out. So I also want to take the time to apologize for many of my recording blunders here. Because this was my first time filming this type of video, uh, I learned many things the hard way. <laughs> um, I didn't know that I had to turn off the autofocus on my camera. That's why you probably have vertigo by now. Um, every time I move, the camera autofocuses again. I tried to cut out some of the worst parts, but it's, uh, yeah, not doable. So after finishing up some details, it's time to sign the painting and remove the tape. And because the paper I used is part of a block pad, I need to remove my sheet by inserting my palette knife in the little slot at the top and making my way around it. And there I have my completed Canada Goose painting. There were several things with this painting that I'm not happy with, but it had to do with the pressure of working under uh, a timeline. Filming myself meant I knew I only had so much time before my uh, storage ran out, and I just wanted to complete the actual painting, so I didn't have the artistic license to just it takes me hours and hours usually to complete a painting because I pause and and put it away and look at it and this and that. So please do give me your suggestions for future videos, both in terms of uh, if you prefer a real-time video where I don't speed up the filming, or more of an explanation, less of an explanation. I'm not sure, so this is, this is new for me. So just feel free to share your uh, thoughts and comments uh, below. Thanks so much for following along. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.